Good morning and a very warm welcome to his service on the third Sunday in Lent within our benefits of St Peter and St Paul at Old Rampton, St Lawrence at Great Barlow and our local ecumenical partnership at Lamsley Green. You are all very welcome. Let us take a few moments in silence to still ourselves so we can feel the presence of the Lord and prepare ourselves for today's service. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. We come to praise the name of the Almighty Father, the Holy One. So let us sing our first hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. our prayer of preparation that we say together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen and our prayers of penitence. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. 
Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And the collect for today. Eternal God, give us insight to discern your will for us, to give up what harms us, and to seek the perfection we are promised in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from Psalm 19, verse 7 to the end. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring for ever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much more pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from a honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, in keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden thoughts. Keep your servant also from willful sin. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our second reading today will be read by Andrew Rosser, and the Gospel reading by Peter Goldthorpe. These readings will then be followed with a sermon from the Reverend Janet Quick. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The message of the cross is sheer folly to those on the way to destruction, but to us who are on the way to salvation, it is the power of God. Scripture says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the cleverness of the clever. Where is your wise man now, your man of learning, your subtle debater of this present age? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. As God in his wisdom ordained, the world failed to find him by its wisdom, and he chose by the folly of the gospel to save those who have faith. Jews demand signs, Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ nailed to the cross, and though this is an offence to Jews and folly to Gentiles, yet to those who are called Jews and Greek alike, he is the power of God and the wisdom of God. The folly of God is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of God stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. 
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. They then said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was, after he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. All the readings that we heard from Scripture uh, today point us to one thing, and that is holiness. The reading from Psalm 19 told us of the reliability of God's message to us, how pure and precious it is. Paul, uh, in his first letter to the believers in Corinth, talked of God's way for us as against the ways of the world, that God's way may seem like foolishness to those embedded in the ways of the world. And John's Gospel narrated Jesus' reaction to those who were peddling merchandise in the temple and were making inflated profits from money changing. The Roman currency that was used in everyday life couldn't be used in the temple. It had to change to temple currency. When we think of the idea of holiness, we think of the notions of the sacred and bestowing sanctity. We talk of sacred places, places where we can readily feel the presence of the divine. And in this lockdown, many of us have missed going into our places of worship where we have felt at ease in the knowledge of the sanctity that we have experienced through our worship there, and that of others, of course. In the case of ancient buildings like Barlow and Old Brampton, uh, throughout the ages, in fact. These are intuitive feelings, but very real. Places that we feel are holy help us to crystallise our faith in some ways, to make it real. Give it a context outside ourselves. A justification, if you like. It's also interesting that sometimes people who have or don't admit to uh, any acknowledged faith also feel that sacred sense. Couples choose, for example, churches like Old Brampton to be married in because they somehow feel that this sacred aspect that the building itself seems to bestow, apart from the fact that it's uh, photogenically attractive, of course. And when churches are broken into, as sadly they frequently are these days, uh, the surrounding community often rallies round with helpful cash to help put things right again. The intuitive feelings that there's something special about places of worship continues. So with all this in mind, it's uh, very easy to understand the actions of Jesus that day, over 2,000 years ago, when he observed the desecration of the holy temple courts. The soiled ways of the world 
had attempted to move into a sacred space. Two incompatible worlds were colliding. My ways are not your ways, says the Lord. So out the greedy money changers and dubious merchants had to go. Most theologians believe that the actions of Jesus in the temple that day sealed his fate. John's Gospel, as we know, puts the incident near to the beginning uh, of Jesus' ministry, while the Synoptic Gospels put it near to the end. Whichever, the authorities were out for Jesus. In original Jewish understanding, the temple in Jerusalem was a microcosm of God's total creation. Some of the temple courts were decorated with flora and fauna to illustrate this. Because, going back to Genesis, we read that after each act of creation, the words, and God saw that it was good. If we have the eyes of the heart to see, we can see this goodness in creation if we believe in a creator God, that is. We will see and respect. And it's no coincidence that the plundering of the world's natural resources and the ecological mess we're now in has been alongside a decrease in the powerful, in the powerful developed world in acknowledgement of the sacred. Christian representation in the world, though, is now on board with this uh, need for ecological action. Some would say that it's been a bit slow in coming, but it has arrived. If we respect the created order as being of God, we are on the Jesus tack. What better time to appreciate this created order than in spring, which brings us to Lent, meaning spring. But Lent, as we know, brings holiness, the sacred, and the collisions between the ways of the world and the ways of God, as shown in the life of Jesus. It brings it all into a much sharper focus. In this time of reflection, we're called to examine for ourselves whether the focus of our lives is to work towards seeing the world, as much as we are able, with the eyes of Jesus the created order, and our fellow human beings. Does our sense of holiness stay as a Sunday realisation only, or can it take, um, or can it be uh, that we take it into our everyday dealings? Might this particular Lent period offer reflections of a more profound kind due to the experiences of the pandemic and this pandemic has been a unique event in, the, in history in which not only one or a few nations have been affected and not only a certain class of people, but everyone has been in some way touched by it, whether by losing loved ones, being impacted mentally by prolonged isolation, being personally fearful of infection, having a staggering increased workload such as those uh, in medical and essential services, etc. So maybe this is a time for newness of thought, an increased urgency in thinking about the deeper issues of life and what really matters to us. And right at the heart of all this is holiness, for only in this sense, with all its implications, is at the heart of Jesus, and therefore has to be at the centre of ours too. Amen. We affirm our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ by saying the Iona Creed together. We believe that God is present in the darkness before dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty where fear and courage join hands, conflict and caring link arms and the sun rises over barbed wire. We believe in a with us God who sits down in our midst to share our humanity. We affirm a faith that takes us beyond a safe place, into action, into vulnerability, and onto the streets. 
we commit ourselves to work for change and put ourselves on the line to bear responsibility, take risks, lift powerfully and face humiliation, to stand with those on the edge, to choose life and be used by the Spirit, the God's new community of hope. Amen. Let us pray. After each section of prayer, I will end by saying the words, Lord, in your mercy. Please respond by saying, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, God of wilderness and water, your son was baptised and tempted as we are. Guide us through this season that we may not avoid struggle, but open ourselves to blessing through the cleansing depths of repentance and the heaven-rending words of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for those who minister in your name and those with responsibility and authority. We pray for the church councils within our benefice who make decisions on our behalf. Guide and direct them, particularly in these ever-changing times, as we adapt and adjust as restrictions are gradually lifted. As we pray for the church throughout the world, may the church be a sign of God's love for all people and a beacon of hope for all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for the world, the world torn apart by Covid, natural disasters, famine, poverty, terrorism, war or conflict. Help us to find a way to love, respect and understand each other and to find the common good where the world can live together in peace and unity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for our communities, particularly in Old Brampton, Barlow and Lamsley Green. Help us to reach out to them to keep in touch with the people we know, but don't see due to the Covid restrictions. Help us to seek new contacts and relations through the showing of our live and recorded services and help us to think of new ways to reach out to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for those who are ill in body, mind or spirit. We pray for those with ongoing health issues, those waiting for results those waiting for operations or recovering from operations. We pray for those who are in pain, those restricted in mobility or those who suffer through loneliness, anxiety or worry at the prospect of losing their jobs and their homes. Dear Lord, shower them with your healing power and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for those who are in grief, those bereaved, in shock, disbelief, anguish or anger. Shower them with your comfort and sympathy. Dear Lord, we pray for those who have died. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray for those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, help us during this time of Lent to look at ourselves inwardly and see what we need to do to be your faithful servant and to know you more clearly 
love you more dearly and to follow you more nearly. Help us to serve your people with justice and all mercy. We gather the needs of ourselves and others and offer them to you in faith and love. Shape us and transform us by your grace that we may grow in wisdom and in confidence. We bring our prayers together by saying, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God our Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. A reminder that although you may not be able to share physically the sacramental act, it is on your behalf. Before God, we are all sharing this. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these 40 days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through a study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation to be for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people, and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with St Lawrence, St Peter, St Paul, and all your saints at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. so we pray. Lord God, strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread, and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of the, your mouth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we come to our final hymn.
God's blessing. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us for this service of Word and Sacrament. Um, as you may or may not know, um, the churches, including our churches, are thinking about opening up uh, for Easter, uh, for services in the buildings uh, themselves. So we welcome that and we pray uh, that that will come to pass. In the meantime, keep safe.